Um, so first up, we have Alawan Al Alawando the Seer. Two, a green and a blue for a 3-5 human shaman. A shaman? Uh, to, you can tap the seer to draw a card, then exile a card from your hand and put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. That card then gains when the last time counter is removed from this card. If it's exiled, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. You cast a creature spell this way, it gains haste until the end of turn. Then remove a time counter from each other card you own in exile. So every time you tap them, you draw one, then exile something. And every time you exile something, everything that's already exiled with time counters on it. Minus is a time counter. And once you have zero time counters on a card, you can play it for free. This is really interesting. I really fucking think this is cool. Um, very cool way to like suspend certain cards but the best part is, is that you're suspending it for free it's it's really really cool um then exile a card from your hand and put so you don't even have to reveal it people are just gonna know how big the card is or how impressive the card is by how many time counters you put on it that's really really cool i really love that um yeah i kind of wish it wasn't simic but beggars can't be choosers asterion the decadent this is the gentleman uh, vampire boy from um, Baldur's gate 3 four a white and a black for a four four vampire elf rogue with death touch and lifelink at the beginning of your end step, choose one. You can feed. Target opponent loses life equal to the amount of life they've lost this turn. So you double their life lost. Or friends, you gain life equal to the amount of life you've gained this turn. So you double your life gain or double their life lost. And you get to do that once per turn. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, Baba Lasaga. Night Witch, one, a black and a green for a 3-3 human warlock. Human. Uh, tap to sacrifice to at Tap it to sacrifice up to three permanents. If there were three or more card types among, among the sacrifice permanents, each opponent loses three life, you gain three life, and you draw three cards. Typical Golgari sacrifice gotta love it bane the lord of darkness the hunk of darkness more like it he's one a white a blue and a green and a black so uh one and an, and an obscura for a five two legendary god creature as long as your life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total bane lord of darkness has indestructible Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you may put a creature card with equal or lesser toughness from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's up to your opponents. Either you get to draw a card or play a creature for free. Up to you guys. Uh, we have Ball, Lord of Murder. This was this card. Uh, this character was mentioned multiple times in multiple cards. Um, for two, a black, a, gr a red, and a green. It's a four-four legendary god creature. As long as your life total is less or equal to half of your starting life total, Ball has indestructible. So same thing as Monkey Boy. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 counter on target creature and goad it. This is the Lord of Gaul. Gaul. The Lord of Gaul? No, the Lord of Goad. His name is Ball. Ball. Uh, next we have Kadira, Caller of the Small. Oh. 
Like small little creatures. One a green and a white for a 3 3 orc ranger with trample. Whenever Kadira, color of the small, deals combat damage to a player for each creature token you control, create a 1 1 white rabbit creature token. Um, so this is like basically doubling your creature count every turn, every time it deals combat damage to a player. Pretty interesting. Lots to build around there. Uh, Commander Liara Portier. Three red and a white for a 5 3 human soldier legendary creature to card. A token. Whenever you attack, spells you cast from exile this turn cost X less to cast, where X is the number of players being attacked. Exile the top X cards of your library. Till end of turn, you may cast spells from amongst those exiled cards. A little word. It's a little bouncy. Bounces around a little bit. A council of four. Three white and a blue for a zero eight human noble creature. Whenever a player draws their second card during their turn, you draw a card. Whenever a player casts their second spell during their turn, you get a two two white knight creature token. Meh. It's interesting. Five mana for a zero eight. It's hard to kill. Uh, next we have Duke Older Raven Guard. Four red and a white for a 5-5 five, five human noble soldier at the beginning of combat on your turn. Another target creature you control gains haste and myriad until end of turn. That's pretty powerful. So giving it haste is, is strong, but giving it myriad where you can copy it and attack other opponents with those copies, that's even stronger. Pair this with some of those extra uh, combat step cards, and you've got uh, quite a lot to throw at them. Uh, Dynahair, Invoker Adept. One a blue, a red, and a white for a 4-4 human wizard with haste. And looks like Rihanna holding a stick. Um, you may have... You may activate abilities of other creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. You can tap Diana Hair. I almost called it Rihanna. You can tap Diana Hair. Uh, when you do, when you activate the, an ability this turn by spending four or more mana to activate it, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. Kind of less exciting than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I'm glad Rihanna got her moment. Um, oh, we've got Elminster, the famous Dungeons and Dragons wizard. Three, a white and a blue for a five loyalty planeswalker. Uh, his static ability is whenever you scry, the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn costs X less to cast, where X is the number of cards looked at while scrying. Plus two is you draw a card, then scry two. Minus three is exile the top card of your library, create a number of one one white or no number of one one blue fairy dragon creature tokens with flying equal to that card's mana value. Not exciting, to be honest. Uh then next we've got Glunch. Oh, he's like Flump. Glunch the Bestower. One, a green and a white for a 0-5 jellyfish legendary creature with flying. At the beginning of your end step, choose a player. They put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature they control. Choose a second player to draw a card, then choose a third player to create two treasure tokens. Glunch is just like the gift that keeps on giving. Who doesn't want to get glunched? Uh, Gorian Wise Mentor, or a green, a white, and a blue, you get a 3-4 Human Wizard with Vigilance. Whenever you cast an Adventure spell, you may copy it. You may choose new targets for this copy. Last time they leaned really heavy into an Adventure, they had some cards that copied Adventures, or cared about you casting Adventures. This is no different. It's pretty strong, but it's only strong in that particular instant. Um, next up we have Jan Jansen, 
Chaos Crafter. For a red, a white, and a black, you get a 3 3 Gnome Artificer with haste. You can tap Jan Jansen to sacrifice an artifact creature, create two treasures. You can set tap Jan Jansen to sacrifice a non creature artifact, create two 1 1 colorless construct artifact creature tokens. Sack creatures or sack a non sack a non creature artifact. So sack an artifact, create two artifacts creatures. Sack an artifact creature, create two treasures. And you can do this as many times as you can tap and untap Jan Jansen. Uh, so this guy is very interesting. John Iren Irenicus, the Shattered One. Two, a blue and a black. Love me, a blue and a black. For a 3-3 three, three Elf Wizard Legendary, at the beginning of your end step, target opponent gains control of up to one target creature you control. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on it and tap it. It's goaded for the rest of the game and it gains this creature can't be sacrificed. Whenever a creature you own but don't control attacks, you draw a card. So this is really interesting because it sets up a scenario where you want to give all of your opponents as many creatures as you can. And you get to draw a bunch of cards. Next up we've got Kaga. Shadow Arch Druid. That's cool. Two, a black and a green for a 1-4 Elf Druid. Whenever Kaga attacks it gains death touch until end of turn mill two cards once during each of your turns you may play a land or cast a permanent spell from among cards in your graveyard that were put there from your library this turn oh, okay so it's a big big self mill strat i like it i like it corlesa scale singer Green and a blue for a 1-4 Dragon Bard. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. I love Future Sight. You may cast Dragon Spells from the top of your library. I love dragons. What's not to love? Next is Lausanne. L Lausanne? Dragon's Legacy. Three, a blue, and a red for a 4-2 Dragon Shaman. With flying. Whenever you cast an Adventure Spell or Dragon Spell... Lausanne deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to an, any target that isn't a commander. That's pretty good. Nice little burn add-on there. And we've got Mahadi, Emporium Master. Uh, one, a black and a red. Or a 3-3 three, three cat devil. At the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. Black Red cares about sacrifice. Who knew? Who knew? Mazzy, trust true sword paladin. One red, green, white for a 3 4 halfling knight, legendary creature. Uh, whenever an enchanted creature attacks one of your opponents, it gets plus two, plus zero, and gains trample until end of turn. Whenever an aura you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, exile it. Until end of your next step, you may cast that card. Uh, so you get to re-up on auras and give things small bump plus trample. Pretty good card. Red, green, white is trample, aggro, auras. Big surprise. Uh, Miram, Sentinel Worm. Three green, blue, red for six six dragon spirit with flying and ward two. Whenever not another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of it. Except the token isn't legendary. That dragon is legendary. That's pretty cool. Copy the dragons. Then we've got Minskambu, Timeless Heroes. Uh, for two, a red and a green, you get a three mana, a three loyalty planeswalker. Um, when Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes, enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a Boo, a legendary 1-1 red hamster creature token with trample and haste. 
my brother's also going to love the fact that they're reprinting the boo tokens so there's more of a chance of getting boo tokens and we can stop opening adventures in the forgotten realms now so i'll drink to that um so minsk and boo's plus one or plus ability is plus one put three one one counters on up to one target creature with trample or haste uh, so this is like you create a boo token that has trample and haste you can put your three counters on boo as a default or you can add it to something else minus two sacrifice a creature when you do minsk and boo timeless heroes deal x damage to any target where x is that creature's power the sacrifice creature was a hamster draw x cards as well minsk and boo timeless heroes can be your commander but they don't have uh, choose a background because they're uh, a planeswalker and that would probably complicate things. Actually, no, it wouldn't. I think they're just strong on their own, so they don't need the background addendum. Uh, Minthara, Merciless Soul for two, a white and a black. You get a 2-2 two -two elf cleric with ward X, where X is the number of experience counters you have. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, you get an experience counter. And creatures you control get plus one, plus zero oh for each experience counter you have. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, Mercurial Lord of Bones. This is that uh, murky boy we were talking about earlier. Four a white, a black, and a green for a 7-5 uh, legendary god. As long as your life total is less than or equal to half of your starting life total, Mercule has Indestructible. All of the gods seem to have that rules text. Um, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's an enchantment and loses all other card types. Pretty dope. Uh, near a wild mage blowing bubbles for a blue and a red for a two seven human elf shaman whenever you cast a spell you may put it on the bottom of its owner's library if you do reveal a card from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card you may cast that card without paying its mana cost then put the rest on the bottom of the library on your of your library in any order this ability only triggers once each turn so not only do you get to cast a spell and put it on your library instead of putting it in the graveyard, but you also get to reveal cards until you reveal um, a non-land card and you can cast it for free. That's pretty strong. Uh, they are a six mana commander though. Um, two seven is nice because it means it can't be taken out too easily, but six mana out the gate for a commander, really heavy automatically knocking it out of the um, CEDH play sphere. Got nine fingers keen for one black, green, blue. You get a 4-4 human rogue with Menace and Ward pay nine life. Nine life, wow. Whenever nine fingers keen deals combat damage to a player, look at the top nine cards of your library. You may put a gate card from among them onto the battlefield. Then if you control nine or more gates, the rest into your hand. Otherwise, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. We want nine gates. Is what you want. So that lets you look at the top nine cards of your library, put them all in your hand. It's pretty good. I think... Uh, Maybe I don't know enough about gates and their popularity or their usefulness to, to know that you can build a, uh, an entire deck with that many gates in it, but that's my ignorance. This card seems dope. It's in Saltite colors, so I'm not going to mind playing it. And it goes with all my other favorite cards. Now we've got OG, the Exquisite Blade. For two, a white and a blue. For, you get a 2-3 Human Monk legendary creature. Um... Uh, why would you give a monk a knife? 
When OG the Exquisite Blade enters the battlefield, gain two life and scry two. Uh, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, exile up to one target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So it's uh, cantrip, blink. That's pretty fun. I think it's interesting. I wish it had background or partner or whatever. Uh, Rag, Raga Draga, Gore Guts Boss. Two a red and a green for a 4-4 four, four human boar. Each creature you control with mana abilities gets plus 2 plus 2. Whenever a creature you control with a mana ability attacks, untap it. And whenever you cast a spell, if at least 7 mana was spent to cast it, untap target creature, it gets plus 7 plus 7 and gains trample until end of turn. This card is nutty. Nutty. Raphael, Fiendish Savior. I believe this is another Baldur's Gate 3 character, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong about that. Three, a black and a red for a 4-4 four, four Devil Noble legendary creature with flying. Other demons, devils, imps, and tieflings you control have plus one, plus one, and lifelink. So, kind of warlock, tribally. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature card was put into a graveyard, to your graveyard from anywhere this turn, create a 1-1 one, one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Pretty good. I like that card. Oh, this is this is my jam right here. Rilsa Rail Kingpin. Three, a blue, and a black for a 2-5 human rogue legendary creature with death touch. All of my favorite things. When Rilsa enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Sold. Whenever you attack, targeting attack, target attacking creature gains death touch until end of turn. If you've completed a dungeon, that creature also gets plus five, plus O, oh, and gains first strike and menace until end of turn. I love it. Aggro death touch is really cool. I cannot wait to build that. This is like by far the card for me in this set. There's one, um, the horror pirate in the commander precons is another one that I'm very excited about. I'm not sure if they're in this list or not. I don't think I've seen any of the commander leaders in this list. Um, here's another amazing card. It is the Tasha the Witch Queen, uh, famously known for her hideous laughter. Three, a blue and a black for a four loyalty planeswalker. Whenever you cast a spell you don't own, create a three, three black demon creature token. You can plus one to draw a card for each opponent, exile up to one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard and put a page counter on it. Minus three, you may cast a spell from among cards in exile with page counters on them without paying their mana cost. Um, and Tasha the Witch Queen can be your commander. So I'm definitely building this. Definitely going to have a bunch of fun with it. I'm incredibly excited. And it's also just kind of nice to put uh, a face to the name, you know? Been laughing hideously for so long. Uh, Thrakus the Butcher is three, a, a red and a green for a three, four dragon peasant with trample. Whenever Thrakus the Butcher attacks, double the power of each dragon you control until end of turn. Really powerful, especially in dragons. Uh, Zevlor Elturel El Exile, one blue, black, red for a 4-2 Tiefling Warrior with haste. For two mana and tap, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, whenever you next cast an instant or sorcery spell, that targets a single opponent or a single permanent an opponent controls this turn. For each other opponent, choose that player or a permanent they control. Copy that spell and copy the target's chosen player or permanent. And the... Sorry. That's just a really wordy thing. Whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell that targets a single opponent or a single permanent an opponent controls... 
For each other opponent, choose that player or a permanent they control, copy that spell, and the copy targets the chosen player or permanent. Pretty good. Uh, we've got colorless cards. Uh, we've got the faceless one, which is a background, a five colorless mana background. If faceless one is your commander's back, oh, wait, this is a three, three creature background. If faceless one is your commander, choose a color before the game begins. Faceless one is the chosen color. Oh, this is um, the colorless pilgrim card. They put these in the commander um, draft packs so that if you don't find a commander that fits the style or colors you want to play of all the cards you draft, you can use Faceless One as like a default. And because you can have a background as a second command. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so this, you can make the Faceless One any color. Um, you just have to choose what it is before the game. And then you can attach a background to it, even though it's a background, and add a second color. So basically, it gives you the freedom to, to play whatever you've uh, managed to draft. Uh, we'll jump into artifacts real fast. Arcane Encyclopedia for three colorless. You get an artifact. Pay three, tap it, draw a card. That's not great. Arcane Signet is... Just a reprint, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Bag of Holding is an interesting reprint because this card is actually fucking dope and nobody paid attention to it when it first came out. Um, I play a similar card in my Quasa deck that's actually attached to a creature, so that's super powerful. Bag of Holding is one colorless. Whenever you discard a card, exile a card that card from your graveyard so it doesn't stay in the graveyard you pay two to draw a card then discard a card so filling up the bag uh, pay four to sacrifice bag of holding and return all cards exiled with bag of holding to your hand really strong card especially if you're not running anything that breaks your hand limit size this is a really interesting way to kind of cycle through your cards or just delay something. If you've got something that's, you know, we saw that one 18 mana card in here. If you're not going to cast that for a while, like put it in the bag of holding and cast it later. Uh, next up, we've got Basilisk Caller, which is, I believe, another reprint. Uh, one colorless for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has death touch and lifelink. Equip cost is two. Really great standard piece of equipment. I did they're reprinting that blade of selves uh it's two colorless equip creature has myriad equip cost is four myriad again is whenever a creature with myriad attacks you can create a copy of it for each other opponent and have that copy attack that opponent and then at the end of combat you sacrifice those copies so it's kind of like mage mirroring or mirror mage uh, but it's on cards now. Oh my god, Bronze Walrus. Look at this happy boy. Um, three colorless for a 2-2 Walrus creature. Artifact creature. When Bronze Walrus enters the battlefield, scry two. And you can tap it to add one mana of any color. Pardon me. Who wouldn't want a happy-go-lucky Walrus boy that is also a mana dork? Burnished Heart, oh, they're bringing this back. Three colorless for a 2-2 elk. Pay three mana, sacrifice Burnished Heart, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. This is a reprint, new art. I like this uh, take on the new art. Campfire is one colorless for an artifact. Pay one to tap it to gain two life. Pay two to tap it and exile Campfire. Put all commanders you own from the command zone and from the graveyard into your hand and shuffle your graveyard into your library. Pretty cool. 
Cool. Charcoal Diamond is too colorless for an artifact. Enters tapped, and you can tap to add black. Uh, Shardalen Dragon is six colorless for a 4 4 dragon artifact creature with flying. Just flavor text on that one. Cloak of the Bat. You can make Batman. Uh, two colorless for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has flying and haste. Equipped cost is two. That's pretty fucking cool. Clockwork Fox is real adorable. Uh, Daniel Lundgren. Great art on that one. Uh, three colorless for a 3-2 artifact fox creature. When Clockwork Fox leaves the battlefield, draw two cards, and each opponent draws a card. Pretty good. Decanter of Endless Waters. Three colorless for an artifact. You have no maximum hand size. Tap to add one mana of any color. That's great. It's actually really powerful. I love it. I love it. I want 12. Dire Mimic. Oh my god. Uh, two mana for this terrible boudoir. Um, artifact Treasure. It has Flash. You can sacrifice Dire Mimic. Add one mana of any color. You can pay three. Dire Mimic becomes a shapeshifter. Artifact creature with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five till end of turn. You can flash it in, pay the 3. So 5 mana total, it becomes a 5-5 five, five till end of turn. That's actually not bad. That's way better than the other Mimic. Um, the other Mimic was just unplayable. This is a an emergency mana source. Or emergency mana fixing. That also becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Which is makes an impact. Drill works mole one colorless for a one one artifact creature mole for two mana and tap. Put a one one counter on drill works mole and a one one counter on up to one target commander creature you control. That's pretty cool. Slowly pump up your commander. Dungeoneers pack. They're just going through the basic hand player's handbook, just finding all the little nuggies. Everything they missed. Dungeoneer's Pack is three colorless for an artifact. Uh, Dungeoneer's Pack enters the battlefield tapped. Pay two, tap it, sacrifice Dungeoneer's Pack. You take the initiative, gain three life, draw a card, create a treasure token, activate only as a sorcery. It has a little bit of everything, just like a Dungeoneer's Pack. Uh, you got a fire diamond for two colorless. Enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, tap it to add red fraying line four colorless mana for an artifact when fraying line enters the battlefield put a rope counter on target creature you control at the beginning of each player's upkeep that player may pay two if they do they put a rope counter on a creature they control otherwise otherwise exile fraying line and each creature without a rope counter on it then remove all rope counters from all creatures so it's basically handing out ropes and whatever doesn't have rope dies whenever someone decides to not pay two mana or can't pay two, two mana. That's pretty fun. Gate Colossus for eight colorless. You get an eight eight artifact creature construct. The spell costs one less to cast for each gate you control because it's a gate construct. So it cares about gates obviously gate clauses can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control you may put gate clauses from your graveyard onto the top of your library a geode golem five colorless for a five three golem with trample whenever geode golem deals combat damage to a player you may cast your commander from the command zone without paying its mana cost that is a big Helio. Iron Mastiff, 4 mana for a 4-4 four, four artifact creature dog. Whenever Iron Mastiff attacks, roll a d20 for each player being attacked and ignore all but the highest roll. 1 through 9, Iron Mastiff deals damage equal to its power to you. Uh-oh. Backfires. 10 to 19, Iron Mastiff deals damage equal to the power 
to its power to defending player. And this is before combat. Uh, if you roll a nat 20, Iron Mastiff deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. So to everybody. That's a pretty good doggo. Four mana, four, four. Lantern of Revealing. Three colorless for an artifact. Tap to add one mana of any color. Already good. Uh, four mana tap. Look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, you may put it onto the bottom of your library. Not too bad. Four mana to like look at the top card. Not great. Manifold key. One nut colorless for an artifact. Uh, pay one and tap it to untap another target artifact. Those are pretty key in getting those artifact machines going. Uh, three and tap to target creature can't be blocked this turn. That's pretty good. Uh, marble diamond, same thing as the other diamonds. Comes in tapped, adds white. Marching duo drone. Look how fucking happy that guy is. Why are you so chipper, weird box guy? Look if Spongebob was a steampunk character. Uh, two colorless mana for a 2-2 two -two construct artifact creature. Whenever marching duo drone attacks, each player creates a treasure token. Sure. Why not? Marut. Eight mana for a 7-7 seven -seven artifact creature construct with trample. When Marut enters the battlefield, if mana from treasure was spent to cast it, create a treasure token for each mana from a treasure spent to cast it. You just get your man your treasures back. When Maru enters the battlefield, if mana from a treasure was spent to cast it, create a treasure token for each mana from a treasure spent to cast. It. Yeah, you just get your treasure back. So if you have seven treasure, you can cast it for or eight treasure, you can cast it for free, sort of. Pretty powerful. Meteor Golem on, on a good reprint there. Uh for seven mana. He's, uh, you get a 3-3 artifact creature golem. When Meteor Golem enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. When it arrives, something dies. It's a pretty decent card. Nobody really plays it. Uh, Mighty Servant of Lueko. Li Lioku. Ko. Three colorless for a 6-6 six, six artifact vehicle with trample and ward discard a card. Whenever Mighty Servant becomes crewed for the first time each turn, it was crewed by exactly two creatures. It gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw two cards. And its crew is four. So you always want to crew it with two creatures. And you always want it to deal combat damage to a player. So that you could draw two cards. I mean, you might get that to happen once. Uh, Mind Stone, two mana for add colorless. Uh, you could pay one to tap it to sacrifice Mind Stone and draw a card. This is a nice old reprint with some cool looking new art. A mirror of Life Trapping. Four mana for an artifact. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it was cast, exile it, then return all other permanent cards exiled with Mirror of Life Trapping to the battlefield under their owner's control. Oh, weird. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it was cast, exile it. That's all creatures. Then return all permanents cards exiled with Mirror of Life Tramping to the battlefield under their owner's control. Huh. That seems like fun. Uh, Moss Diamond is the green diamond, enters battlefield tapped, adds green mana. Neo Teloid Ship. Not not a Lloyd Ship. Oh, my, wow. Not a Lloyd ship. Four colorless for a 5-5 mythic artifact vehicle with flying. 
Uh, when Nautiloid ship enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. Love it. Whenever Nautiloid ship deals combat damage to a player, you may put a creature card exiled with Nautiloid ship onto the battlefield under your control. That's cool. Crew 3. Crew 3 for a 5-5. Five, five. Not bad. Uh, navigation orb is three colorless. Want to become famous? I do. I don't. I don't. Uh, navigation orb is three colorless for an artifact. Um, pay to tap it to sacrifice navigation orb. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards. Reveal them. Put one onto the battlefield and the other into your hand. Then shuffle five mana. Get two cards, two lands. Meh. Uh, Nimble Rite Schematic is two colorless for an artifact. When Nimble Rite Schematic enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature token. That's pretty, pretty okay. Noble's Purse is two colorless for an artifact. Noble's Purse enters the battlefield tapped and with three coin counters on it. You can tap it to remove a coin counter from Noble's Purse and create a treasure token. With two mana, you eventually get three treasures. I mean, not great, but it's also not terrible. There's obviously more than three coins in this purse, though. Patriarch Seal. Three colorless for an artifact uh, that taps to add one mana of any color. Uh, pay one, tap it to untap target legendary creature you control. That's cool. That is real cool. Only a fool ignores a letter bearing the official mark of the Patriarch family. Ugh. Really cool. Uh, Pilgrim's Eye, three mana. For a 1-1 one, one, uh, Thopter Beast, Thopter Artifact Creature with flying. When Pilgrim's Eye enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. I believe Pilgrim's Eye is a, a a fairly old card. People love it, so they're reprinting it. And this hilarious art of a weird porcupine artifact creature flying. It looks like dog copter from uh, even universe. So I appreciate it. A prize statue. Two colorless for an artifact. When prize statue enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, create a treasure. Looks very demonic. Does not look some, like something you should be prizing. Prophetic prism. Two colorless mana. Uh, when it ETBs draw a card, you can pay one to tap it to add one mana of any color. So mana f replace, not mana fix. Or literal mana fixing. Yeah. Rug of Smothering. Three colorless for an artifact creature construct. One and th one three power and toughness. Uh, flying. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose a life for each spell they've cast this turn. So that's pretty cool. Sky Diamond is the enters battlefield tapped. Tap to add blue. Stone Speaker Crystal, four mana. Tap to add two colorless. Or pay to tap, sacrifice Stone Speaker Crystal. Exile any number of target players' graveyards. Draw a card. That's really powerful. That's like um, the Lantern of the Lost, but you can target more than one player. That's pretty good. Swiftfoot Boots, pay two. Uh, artifact equipment. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste, and equip cost is one. Swift foot boots are great. 
Uh, Trailblazer's Torch, four mana for an artifact equipment. When Trailblazer's Torch enters the battlefield, you get initiative. When equipment creature becomes block, it deals two damage to each creature blocking it. Equip one. Oh, that's pretty handy. Treasure Keeper. This guy's scary. Four colorless for a 3-3 three, three artifact creature construct. When Treasure Keeper dies, reveal cards off the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card with mana value 3 or less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. I don't I don't mind that. That's a that's a fun little game moment. Um there's a few cards that do th similar things. I don't mind it. Universal solvent. One colorless for an artifact. Seven and sac sacrifice to destroy target permanent. That's not a good card. A few drops could dissolve the webs of Loth herself. Not a good card. Vexing Puzzle Box. This one I heard a little bit about. It seems very interesting. Um, three colorless for an artifact. Mythic artifact. Whenever you roll one or more dice, put any number of charge counters on Vexing Puzzle Box equal to the result. You can tap the Puzzle Box to add one mana of any color and roll a d20. Automatically three mana for... Three colorless for one uh, a one mana rock. That's pretty good. Any color. Roll a d20. So you get to roll a die. So you get to put um, charge counters on Vexing Puzzle Box. Then you can tab it to remove 100 charge counters from Vexing Puzzle Box. Search your library for an artifact card. Put that card onto the battlefield. Then shuffle. That's pretty fun. Obviously, it's going to take a little while to get to 100. If you roll all nat 20s, you still have to roll it five times. Do this five times in order to, to get to 100. But it's also talking about whenever you roll one or more dice. So you're looking at all of the other cards that ask you to roll dice. And I think that that's, that's the key there is that you want to put this not only in an artifact deck... Or a deck with a specifically strong artifact off to the side. But you also want to put this in die rolling decks. Just make sure there's an artifact in your die rolling deck that you want to find with Vexing Puzzle Box. Uh, Wayfarer's Bobble is an old gem. One mana for an artifact. Pay two to sacrifice it. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. It's not a good card anymore. It might have been at one point. It's not great. Um, and now we get into lands. We've got the titular Baldur's Gate. Whatever would we do without it? Look at it. Bad boy. Look at this gate. Look at this gate being all gatey. I don't know what to tell you. It's Baldur's Gate. No, I can read the card. Um, the Baldur's Gate is a legendary land with the land type gate. Tap it to add colorless, or you can pay two to tap it and add X mana of any one color where X is the number of gates you control. Pretty powerful. Basilisk Gate is the same thing, except for um, pay two and tap it to target creature gets plus X plus X, uh, where X is the number of gates you control. Uh, Black Dragon Gate is the... Black Dragon Gate enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, choose a color other than black. This gate taps for black and the mana of the chosen color. Uh, Bountiful Promenade. We've got all of our two two-color paired lands here. Um, these enter tapped if you have two or more opponents. Uh, unless you have two or more opponents, so these are pretty much commander only, full table only cards. Um, Citadel Gate is the pick a color other than white, dual land, pick a color other than red, dual land. Um, Command Tower, 
add one color of your commander's color identity. This new art, the ball, the water deep. I think this is the water, water deep. Jurlax tower. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. It looks cool anyway. Uh, evolving wilds. The new fresh art is really cool. Uh, Gond gate. Add one. Add colorless, and then add one mana of any color that a gate you could control could produce. Well, that's interesting. Uh, it's also interesting to note that Gond gate says. Uh, gates you control enter the battlefield untapped. So even if they say enters tapped on it, you have a gaunt gate out. Great. Keep gate is add a colorless. Pay one to tap to add mana of any color. So mana exchange. Pay one tap. Tap an untapped gate you control. Create a treasure token. So future, tr future mana. Uh, luxury suite is the black red dual. Manor Gate is the pick a color plus green duel. Morphic Pool is the Demir duel. Reflecting Pool, add one mana of add one mana of any type that land you could control could produce. My brain did not want to say any of that. Tap, add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. There, nailed it. Fucking first try. Uh, Seagate is any color of your choice plus blue. Sea of Clouds is the Azorius Duel. Uh, Spire Garden is the Gruel Duel. Gruel Duel. And then we've just got basic lands. This is Plains. Looks gorgeous. Oh, that Plains looks gorgeous too. Oh, we're getting three basic lands? Four basic lands. Four per color? That's a lot. Um, This one is pretty great. I saw the artist posted this on Twitter talking about how they love to post uh, Twilight. Or they love to paint Twilight pictures and they finally got an opportunity to... Uh, Celebrate some D and D magic love with this Twilight. Boulder. That's Boulder's Gate. There. That's the imposing sea tower of Baldarin. Oh, that's tower. Heading into Baldur's Gate. Um, this one's nice. This one's pretty cool too. Going off to war. Whoa, that one's intense. Uh, we got some swamps. Mountains, these are all really gorgeous. That's all she wrote. I'm very excited for this set. I didn't. I didn't know that I was going to be. Um, and not in like a bad way or anything. I just didn't. I think I've let people. And not, this isn't, it's not anyone's fault at all. Um, my fault. I've let people talk me into having a bit of a sour feeling towards um, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms from last year. Not in terms of play or my enjoyment, but just in terms of its general impact on Magic the Gathering. I think that there's enough D&D lovers out there that are very excited for this set, and there's enough awesome things that they didn't really get to tap into with the AFR set last summer that they should keep doing these. They have access to the IP. They have access to the, um, the, the people that make it so they 
can get any question they have answered. They could get inside scoops that, you know, only the nerdiest of D&D nerds will know. Um, and it's all, it's, it's a relatively endless pool of, of lore and creatures and worlds and, um, exciting places and, and things. And I think they should explore more of it. I definitely like the idea of them keeping it separate from the official set. I wouldn't mind if they just continuously did Commander Legends sets for Baldur's Gate or for Dungeons and Dragons, sorry. Um, Baldur's Gate being the first kind of test, I guess. We'll see uh, how they feel it went in due time. And I hope that it does well because I think it's going to um, play a huge role in whether or not they continue to not mess with the cadence or anything, but like the idea that um, the idea that there's more fun to be had outside of stressing themselves to come up with amazing things for in universe magic and i think that there's room to have fun and be serious in both uh, i'm just trying to look for uh i look for like release date info products tabletop um yeah, i think there's there's tons of room to have fun in dungeons and dragons there's There's, there's reason to be excited about them going outside of Magic's myriad of planes, and there's reasons to be excited for the idea that they're going to stay and continue to do things inside of their universe. I agree with most sentiments around the idea of like Warhammer and Stranger Things and these games that aren't, that are far less tangibly connected than Magic and D&D. Um, and I think that all of those things should remain ancillary products. They should be reprints. They should be alt art. They should be, um, whatever it is you call what they did with the Dracula cards, where it's like the title of the fictional character. And then underneath it is the title of the like real card. Um, I think they should do those things and have fun products for fans and players to enjoy it but I think that there's some there's some meat on the bones of Dungeons and Dragons that actually adds to the experience of playing Magic the Gathering and I think that they've on paper at least nailed some of those things that were missing from the previous set I'm sad that they're not adding more dungeons because I think the variants and usefulness of the three dungeons that were in the first set were what killed it not the fact that nobody wanted to do it i think they were just not good enough and not varied enough so when one started to st stand out everyone just did the one dungeon over and over again and forgot the other two and it just wasn't as strong as they were hoping it was. Or maybe they nerfed it after playtesting because they were afraid it was too strong. Who knows? They should have added more dungeons. It, like, they didn't add a single venture into the dungeon card in this set. Which I'm just noticing now, which is crazy to me. Um, because I think that's a core part of Dungeons & Dragons and them leaving it behind because they didn't do a good enough job the first time around um, means that there's actually you know what I'm probably wrong I'm, they probably didn't cut it from this set they probably just never included it because these sets are built so long in advance that um, I don't know that they had the time to pivot 
after Adventures in the Forgotten Realms last summer. It hasn't even been a year. I don't think they could have uh, done that. Anyway, I appreciate um, anyone that came by and hello or talked about cards. Uh, we got a couple new followers today and I appreciate that a lot. I'm going to cut these up.